Okay, this question asks to find the unit factor normal to A and B. Okay, so let's do that. So if it's A normal to A and B, that means it's asking to find the cross product. So I, J, K, there we go. And then 5 over 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 2. Okay, so this is 3, 4. Uh, okay, 3, 4, 2, 2, I minus 5 over 2, 4, 1, 2, J plus uh, 5 over 2, 1, 3, 2, K. So this is 6 minus 8, so it's negative 2, I minus 5 minus 4, uh, that's going to be J plus uh, 5 minus 3, 2, K. So if you write the ijk component, this is negative 2, negative 1, and 2. So that's the uh, coordinate. And then we are finding the unit vector normal to a and b. So the unit vector is finding the length of that. So length of that is negative 2, negative 1, 2. The square root of 4 plus 1 plus 4. So this is uh, square root of 9, which is same as 3. So the normal vector, the unit vector normal to that is negative 2, uh, negative 1, and 2 over 3, which is same as the option, let's see, this is same as negative 2 over 3, negative 1 over 3, 2 over 3. Let's see, so it's not going to be A, B, C, D. E is looking similar, but it has the negative, it's missing the negative sign, so this is not right. But this is same as negative 2 over 3, 1 over 3, negative 2 over 3, right? So this is the similar format as F. So the answer for this question is F. Okay, this question asks to find the length of the curve. Okay, so the length of the curve from 0, 0 to pi over 3 to ln 2 over 2. I'm going to do with respect to x. So L is from 0 to pi over 4 square root of um, the right square root of the 1 plus di over dx which is dy over dx is secant x over 1 times secant x factorial uh, not factorial a derivative so 1 over secant x times secant x tangent x so this becomes tangent x, and if you recall, the length is something plus 1 plus um, uh, dy over dx squared dx. So it's going to be tangent squared x dx, which is 0 to pi over 4. And if you recall, 1 plus tangent squared x is same as secant squared x, so this is going to be secant x dx. Because because of the square root, the power two is cancelled, so this is zero to pi over four is secant x dx, and if you remember the secant x integration, this is ln of secant x plus tangent x integrated from zero to pi over four, so this is ln of secant pi over four plus tangent pi over four. And then minus ln of secant secant zero plus tangent zero, which secant tangent zero is zero, and secant of one secant of zero is one, so ln of one is zero, so this entire thing is just zero. So this is ln secant pi over four, which is uh, two square root of two, plus tangent pi over four is one, so this is ln of 2 to square root of 2 plus 1 so this is ln of square root of 2 plus 1 so the answer for this question is a okay this question has to recall that blah 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 and then find the limit of cosine of x cubed plus tangent inverse of x to the 6th power over 2 minus 1 over x to the 6th 12 okay let's find the cosine of x to the 3th power first cosine of x cubed is same as negative 1 to k x to the cube to k over 2 k factorial just same as negative 1 to the k x to the 6 k over 2 k factorial okay 
which is um, and then you divide it by x to 12 because I'm gonna uh, write this as independent like into like three like group instead of like adding all of them so limit of x go to 0 cosine of x cubed over x12 x12 yep and then limit of x to 0 of tangent inverse of x to 6 over 2 over x12 plus limit of uh, x goes to 0 negative 1 over x to 12 so this is that and divided by 12 so this actually becomes negative 1 to the k x to the 6k minus 12 because it's divided by 12 so over 2k factorial and i'm going to evaluate this first so if it's uh, k equals 0 because it's k equals 0 i totally forgot that well yeah k equals 0 to infinity k equals 0 to infinity k equals 0 to infinity there we go we have all now so if k equals 0, then this just becomes um, 1 over, so if k is equal to 0, this becomes 1 over x to the, 1 over 1, x to the negative 12, so it's going to be 1 over x to the 12 power, okay. And then let's do the second term, k equals 1, then this becomes negative 1 over uh, x to the 6 minus 12 so x to the 6 power and then there's a 2k factorial so it's going to be 2 okay so the third one plus negative 1 to the um, right because it's k equals 0 k equals 1 k equals 2 k equals 2 then it's going to be positive and x 12 minus 12 which is x 0 so 1 over 1 and then two, fac 2 times 2 factorial, so 4 factorial, which is uh, 1 over 24. So 1 over 24. So 4 factorial is the same as 2, 24. So, and then this fifth one, this, which, it, which, which is the third one, or the fourth one actually. The fourth one, but k is equal to 3. So that's going to be negative 1 times x to the 6th power x 18 minus 12 is 6 so 6 power and then 6 factorial and then so on and if you look at that if the limit of x goes to 0 all of the terms will be just be gone except for 1 over 24 so that's we want to find okay for the first one at least and then let's evaluate the tangent inverse okay like tangent inverse of x to 6 over 2 so tangent inverse tangent inverse of x to 6 over 2 is same as plug it in x to the 6 over 2 into the x negative 1 to the k x 6 over 2 to k plus 1 over 2 k plus 1 and then this is same as k equals 0 to infinity negative 1 to the k and x to the 12 k plus 6 over 2 to 2 k plus 1 over entire thing over 2k plus 1 so I'm going to just multiply this and then put um, right because this entire thing is the denominator right like that and then you're dividing by 1 over 2k plus 1 so this is going to 2k plus 1 down there okay but we're dividing at the end by x to 12 power so if you do that this just becomes k equals 0 to infinity negative 1 to the k x to the 12k minus 6 over and 2 to the 2k plus 1, 2k plus 1. Let's evaluate it. It'll be evaluated from k equals 0. So k equals 0, this becomes x to the um, negative 6 over uh, 2 times 1. Okay, plus or minus more like. So minus k equals 1, then this becomes negative 1 times x to the 12 minus 6, so x over 6, x to the 6 power, and then 2 times 3 times uh, 3, and so on. If you look at the, if you notice the pattern, 
the x will never be zero x i mean x that's not what i meant x if the x goes to zero there will be no term that has x zero make make just the constant equals just um i'll just say it again i'm sorry so if if you just look at the patterns constantly this thing will never go it will never have the value that's only a constant it will always have x value and if the limit of x goes to zero all of them will be just go to zero so you do, there's nothing to add in this term and so far we only found 1 over 24 and let's try the limit of x goes to zero from negative 1 over x to the 12. So negative 1 over x to the 12, if you find the derivative, because we are not given that, negative x 1 over x to the 12, and then the second term, if you find the derivative of that, I'm going to write as fx is negative x to the negative 12, and then if you find the derivative of that, that becomes 12x to the negative 13, if you find a double derivative of that, that's going to be the 12 times negative 13 times x to negative 14. You don't even have to find the equation for this. If you just look at that, all of the derivatives will constantly have the x values on it. And we don't want to have the x values because if the limit of x goes to 0, this will all just go to 0. So this will also go to 0. So only thing that has the constant term when the limit of x goes to 0, that's just 1 over 24. So, the answer for this question is D. Okay, this question asks to find the volume of a solid whose base is the region of in the first quadrant bounded by y equals square root of 3 minus x and in the line x equals 2. Okay, so it's the volume of the cross-section area, which is just the area derivative at the derivative integration. Area integration is the volume is going to be square um, y equals a uh, square root of 3 minus x and this is basis uh, the square the the region is square so it's going to be square root of 3 minus x square root of 3 minus x so the area is just 3 minus x dx and it's integrating from in the line x equals 2 bounded by so it's going to be from 0 to 2 so if you integrate that that becomes 3x minus x squared over 2 from 0 to 2. And my laptop is overheating as usual. So it's from 0 to 2. So this becomes 6 minus 4 over 2, which becomes 4. So the area is 4, so the answer is F. Okay, this question asks to find a Taylor series for fx is equal to sine of pi x. Okay, so fx is equal to um, sine of pi x and then f prime of x of x is equal to negative pi oh wait it's positive sorry pi cosine pi x and then f double prime of x is equal to negative pi squared and then sine pi x okay right and then i'm gonna find a triple one as well f triple prime of x is equal to negative pi cubed sine not sine cosine of pi x okay now let's write the taylor series form so it's a center at a equals one so f of one value is sine of pi which is zero so that goes away so f prime of one becomes pi cosine of pi which is o yes pi cosine of pi becomes, um, let's draw it, it's going to be negative pi, I see, because it's negative 1, so negative 1 times pi becomes negative pi, and then f double prime of x becomes uh, f of double prime of 1 becomes negative pi squared uh, sine pi, which is 0, 
so that also goes away. So I have triple prime of 1 becomes negative pi squared pi cubed of cosine of pi, which is um, so negative, negative, so positive, positive pi cubed. Okay, so when you write the Taylor series expansion, you write the first term, second term, and the third term, and blah, blah, blah. But our first term is zero, so we start with the first term. So negative pi, and then it's pointed x minus 1. The third one would be um, plus pi cubed, and then x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial. Don't forget the factorial. And then so on. So the sign is alternating. So it's not going to be uh, negative 1 to the k. So it's not e and d and c. OK, we got rid of a lot of that. Now let's look at it. And the term is x minus 1 to the 1 power and the x minus 1 to the 3 power. So it's also not going to be a. It has to be 2k plus 1 to make it to the odd power. And then also factorial is odd power, so it's going to be 2k plus 1 factorial. So it's going to be either b or f. What is the difference? Let's see. Oh, pi power. Yes, pi is also like, um, pi is also like, let's see, pi is also like odd power, right? So it's going to be 2k plus 1. So the answer for this question is b. Okay, this question asks to describe the following two series, negative 1 to the k, tangent to 1 over k, and negative 1 to the k, negative 1 over l and k. Okay, let's try the first one first. So negative 1 to the k of tangent um, of 1 over k. So let's evaluate it absolutely first. Absolutely, if you evaluate that, that becomes just tangent of 1 over k. And then if you apply the limit comparison test, uh, tangent of 1 over k over 1 over k, and then limit of k goes to infinity, right? So you can if you plug in infinity, it's just going to be undefined. So you do the L'Hopital's rule, L'Hopital. So this becomes um, secant squared 1 over k times negative 1 over k squared. This is also going to be negative 1 over k squared. So these two will be uh, cancelled. Now we can just plug in a secant squared of 1 over k and then limit of k goes to infinity. So this is just going to be secant squared 0 which is 1. Okay, which is greater than zero. Okay, so limit comparison says either says it's gonna be either diverging or converging. But if you remember your uh, similar form of one over k, this is by p series test. It's diverging, so it's not absolutely converging. That means okay, both series converge conditionally. Oh wait, actually no. We don't know about that yet. Okay, and now let's try then uh, not absolute, without the absolute value, just the original. So it's going to be negative 1 to the k. Tangent 1 over k. 1 over k. And then if you uh, apply AST, alternate series test, this is just going to be tangent of 1 over k. Right? And then if limit of k goes to infinity, this just becomes tangent of Im tangent inverse. Wait, yeah, we don't know. we don't want to see that. And then tangent of one over infinity, one over infinity, which is um, tangent of zero. So this is just zero. Okay, so it does goes to zero. And the value is in, uh, decreasing. So it's 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, blah, blah, blah. Right? I mean, it has to have tangent in front. Right. Tangent of 1 over 3, tangent of um, 
1 over 2 and tangent of 1 over 3 and blah 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 so on so it is not increasing increasing so it meets the second condition so that's why it's converging so it is conditionally converging so D is not right it's not F okay and we do know that it's one series uh, converges um, it's not gonna be E as well because it has to have series condi com uh, converges conditionally so it's gonna be either B or A or uh, so A, B, C basically okay, let's evaluate the second one so the second one is negative one yeah my handwriting is getting a little messy because my laptop is overheating and I'm having a hard time writing it ln of k to the k power so we're gonna apply the root test root test we haven't really used that a lot because it's the k power so square root of k of k negative 1 over ln of k this just cancels out the k and this just becomes 1 over ln k and limit of k goes to infinity this is infinity k then 1 over ln of infinity which is 1 over infinity which is 0 so which is less than 1 so it says converging so this actually proves that it's absolutely converging because it has the absolute sign on it so it proves that it's absolutely converging so it's not B, it's not C, so one series that converges absolutely. So the answer for this question is A. Okay, this question asks to find the angle between uh, vector B and W. It's not actually, it's asking to find W magnitude. Okay, so, okay, we know the angle and the unit vector. So we can do the projection, right? Or, oh, actually, no, we're not doing the projection. I mean, we can use the um, uh, dot product for this one because we know the dot product value. It's not exactly dot product value, but we can apply the dot, dot, dot product equation. So if you recall, dot product is d, uh, v dot w is equal to b magnitude, if I can write, and then w magnitude of cosine of uh, theta, which theta in our case is given as pi over 3. So this just becomes b and w uh, cosine of pi over 3, which is given as just 1 over 2. So this can be written as b, w, 1 over 2. Okay, and we don't know the b dot w value yet, and we know um yeah we don't know anything yet okay so, but u is the unit vector of the direction of v so u is basically v over v right and then w dot u which is w dot v over v magnitude is six that gives us w dot v is same as 6 v uh, magnitude so you can replace this as 6 v magnitude and I'm just going to write that so 6 v and v this will cancel out each other and then we want to find the w magnitude so, so w magnitude is 6 times uh, 2 because if you multiply by 2 to get rid of the 1 over 2 so this just becomes 2 so this is 6 times 2 which is 12 so 12 is equal to W magnitude which is answer choice D okay this question has to evaluate uh, to integrate that so okay this is the partial fraction decomposition question so 3x to the square plus 2x plus 3 over x to the fourth uh, plus 2x squared plus 1. 
This can be written as x squared plus 1 squared, right? So you can write this as a over x squared plus 1 plus, oh, a x plus b, because it's x squared, and the pressure fraction decomposition makes you put the denominator value, denominator power is 1 less, so a x plus b. And then the square value, x squared plus 1 squared. If you have the square value, you follow the same uh, like format as the result as like the x squared plus 1, the single ones. Because since it's squaring, you follow the same format as the one that does not have a squared value, which is going to be just cx plus d. And this is going to be same as um, x to the fourth power plus 2x squared plus 1, 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. So if you multiply x squared plus 1 squared on both sides, this just becomes ax um, plus b, x squared plus b, x plus b, and, oh, sorry x squared plus 1 plus cx plus d, which is equal to 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay, for this one, I'm just gonna like uh, expand it instead of plugging the values because I think that's easier to solve it. So ax cubed plus ax uh, plus bx squared plus b plus cx plus d is equal to 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. So ax cubed, there's no ax cubed, so a becomes 0. Okay, and then b, there's only one b, so b becomes 3. So a plus c becomes 2, because it's 2x. So a plus c is 2. is equal to 2, but we know a is equal to 0, so c becomes 2. And b plus d has to equal to 3. So b plus d is equal to 3, but recall that b is 3, so d is going to be 0. That makes our equation looking like um, 3 over x squared plus 1 plus 2x over x squared plus 1 squared and you have to integrate this thing dx okay so I'm gonna separate it into 2 3 over x squared plus 1 dx plus 2x x over x squared plus 1 squared dx Okay, so this one, if you remember that the inverse tangent, this is same at uh, the inverse tangent integration. Uh, inverse tangent deriva derivation is 1 over x squared plus 1. So this is basically 3 tan inverse of x plus this one. It's a u substitution, right? So you can put u as u as x squared plus 1 du becomes 2x 2x dx so this becomes du over u squared plus c right don't forget the plus c that's the most important part <laughs> 3 tangent inverse of x and then plus u minus 2 du plus c and then 3 tangent of inverse of x and then this is same as negative u minus u plus c if you integrate it so this becomes 3 tangent of inverse of x then minus 1 over x squared uh, plus 1 plus c. So if you find the same one that looks like that, 
which is gonna be the answer choice F. So the answer is F. Okay. This question asks, suppose p two x is a pair of polynomial of order n is equals to, centered at a is equal to one. Okay, so if you want to find a p two of x, this is gonna be same as finding f of um, because it's at a equals one, so it's gonna be f of one uh, plus. If I can write plus f prime of one, one over one factorial, x minus one, plus f double prime of one over two factorial. If I can write, yeah, because my laptop is overheating a lot. X minus one squared. Okay, so let's find the f of one value first. F of one is. 1 to the 10th power which is gonna be 1 this is 1 right plus f prime of x let's find that first and that's gonna be 10 x to the 9 then f prime of 1 would become just 10, right? So this becomes 10x minus 1. Yes. Can I please write? Yes. Okay, cool. And then f double prime of 1 is. Uh, actually, let's find the f double prime of x first. f double prime of x is 90 times x to the 8th power. So f double prime of 1 becomes 90. 90. So this is plus 90 over 2 x minus 1 squared. So this becomes 1 plus 10 x minus 1 plus uh, 45. I want to write x minus 1 squared laptop. <laughs> P2 and Mercury is at P2 of 0. So let's plug in 0. So 0, then 1 plus 10, negative 1, and then plus 45. Because 0 minus 1 squared is just 45. So this just becomes 1 minus 10 plus 45 plus 45 yes so this is just negative 9 plus 45 so this becomes 36 so the answer for this question is f okay this question has to find the interval of convergence okay so i'm gonna use the ratio test to find the interval of convergence so this is gonna be k equals 1 to infinity xk um, plus 1 over square root of two, k plus 1 and divided by the original so we're multiplying by the reciprocal of the original so it's going to be xk on the bottom and then it's going to be square root of k and limit of k goes to infinity k goes to infinity so k plus 1 and k if it goes to infinity it's the same power so it's gonna just be 1 so and I can separate the xk plus 1 into xk times x over xk so and then that comes down this way yeah I'm kind of lazy to write so I'm just gonna put it like that so this x to the k and x to the k will be cancelled out so limit of k k goes to infinity k goes to infinity all we left is x which is less than one because it's an interval of convergence so it's already converging so it's going to be x is equal to negative one to one x is in between negative one to one so it's not going to be a 
it's not gonna be B. Either we're gonna be C, D, E, F, and let's check our um, bound. So X is equal to negative one. Let's see whether it's converging or not. X is equal to negative one. Then the original uh, function becomes K equals one to infinity, negative one to the K over uh, square root of K. So if you uh, apply the alternative series test, this becomes one over square root of K. Right? Yeah, and then if the limit of k goes to infinity, this is 1 over infinity, 1 over infinity, which is 1 over, this is just going to be equal to 0. So it does meet the first condition, and the second one, it's non-increasing, so it is uh, decreasing, 1, 1 over 2, 1 over square root of 2, so it is constantly decreasing, so this is actual meeting the AST. So by the AST, this one is in, in converging. So that means it's not going to be D and F. Either going to be C and E, C or E, more like. So let's check X equals 1 then. X equals 1. X equals 1, if I can write. Then it's going to be 1 over square root of K. Right? But this is k equals 1 to infinity. And if you remember the p-series test, this is the same as 1 over k 1 half. And since the value is 1 half, which is less than 1, so it's going to be diverging. So this makes the answer choice C the right answer. So the answer is C, if I can circle. Okay, if the answer is C. Okay, this question asks to find the polar equation of the given curve. So, if you look at it, there are uh, four pedals, right? So, four... Um, is my laptop gonna work? Okay, somewhat working. Okay, four pedals, right? I wanna write four pedals. <laughs> yeah, but it's really heating, overheating really bad, so for pedals then and also we know the sign is uh, if it's like an even number it's gonna be the cosine one and cosine one has two n pedals right so two n pedals so two n is equal to four n is equal to two that means it's gonna have cosine of two data right so that's the only choice for f so we are done so the answer for this question is f so all you have to check is how many pedals are there and then if it's like odd number it's going to be sine even number is going to be cosine and then check and then you know the cosine is to n pedals so you set that as equal to like the number of pedals that you see and then you'll figure out that it's cosine of two data so the answer is f Okay, the very last one. So this is 25. Which of the following is the McLaren series for secant squared uh, x to the cube power? So if you remember, the secant squared x is, um, you can get the secant squared x by uh, deriving from tangent x, right? Yeah, my laptop, just one more question. Just just one more. <laughs> I'm begging you, I, I can write. <laughs> so d over dx. So you just have to plug it in the series format in here. So d over dx. And then it's x plus x cubed over 3. And then plus dot dot dot. x cubed over 3. So if you find the der uh, derivation of that, this just becomes 1, right, plus 2x squared, right? So that will be the secant squared x. But we're interested in secant squared x to the cube. So secant squared 
x to the cube becomes, you just have to plug it in x cube instead of x. So 1 plus 2 x cube squared plus dot 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 please okay dot cool one plus um two to the x to the sixth power plus dot 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 and if you look at the answer choices and that's not exactly the same right oh right 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 because yeah right um wait hold on that that looks weird okay um what did i do okay so derivation is one plus uh x to the cube over three that becomes x squared not x to x squared okay that was my math okay so this i'm gonna erase it here and okay and now let's write it again so this is one plus x squared because x cubed over 3 uh, becomes x squared for derivation, which I don't know why I messed up. But that, right? But instead of x, we're going to replace with x cubed, so that becomes 1 plus x to the 6th power. Plus x to the, uh, I can write this as x to the cube, x to the squared, and then this is entire thing to the cube power so this becomes 1 plus x to the 6th power which is why the answer choice b is the right answer so this question answer is b